Alright team, what I have for you today is we're going to recover that cash. We're going to use the contents to survive. Right, the crazy thing is, is when you need to survive, it's not going to happen when, or where, or how you want it to. The conditions are never going to be ideal. When we placed this cache two months ago, I had no idea that when I was going to need it, it was going to be snowing. Ambient temperature of 23 degrees. It's not ideal, but survival never is. And because of that, as I'm setting out to recover that cache, I don't have my notebook that I took the notes in for where we placed it. But the good thing is, is, I remember because I placed that cash in a site that I knew that I could find day or night. So I'm gonna work my way back to those trees, work my way over that cedar tree, and begin digging around until we can go ahead and find it. All right guys, so we went ahead and made it to these trees, the cedar tree, and I know that where we placed it was near this area. You know, Murphy's gonna hit at the worst possible time. And I don't have my map, or my direction, so it's a good thing uh, leaving a cache in a place that I know that I can find if I need to with, without those directions is super important. So let's try to dig this thing up. All right, we got it. Once we have it secured, we need to get off that X, do a quick inventory, and start cross-loading some of this equipment down onto our person, because I don't want to be carrying around a box. Right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna find a source of water. I'm gonna use my stand-up bag, reach in and get as much as I can, fill up that bag, get off the bank a little bit and go ahead and set it up and get these iodine tablets in place. That way, the water is being purified as we continue to move. Now, one of the issues that we may be facing and dealing with, depending on how contested that environment is, is if we need to try to employ some counter tracking measures. The problem with the snow is it's next to impossible to do, but there is a way, and I'm gonna show you how to employ it. Right, because the problem with brushing out footprints in the snow is it looks like brushed out footprints in the snow. The team, this is called cutting the corner or slipping the stream if you're using a creek or riverbank. What we're going to do is as we're approaching that linear danger area, in this case a road, we're going to start cutting the corner to make it look like we're trying to save some time. We're going to move down however far that we need to with the amount of time that we have, continue to leave some track and some sign to ensure that if anybody is trying to track us, that they're going to believe that we're still moving in that direction. A hardball road like this, less of a chance of, of leaving some sign, then we'll continue to follow this hardball road leaving as little of a sign as we can, hoping that the vehicles are gonna cover our track and then we can get off trail again. Right now that we've gone ahead and employed some counter tracking measures, we're off the X. I'm in a secure location. Let's go ahead and start working through this kit. On that note, what you have in your kit is gonna be based off the scenarios and the situations that you feel that you need to be prepared for. This is in no way me trying to tell you 
this is what you have to have in the kit. But what I can tell you is that everything in your kit needs to be able to be employed to effect survival. We need to think about food, fire, water, shelter, first aid, navigation, self-defense, and maintaining a core body temperature. Staying hydrated is absolutely a critical thing that we need to do, especially when it's cold. So we use our iodine tablets to purify that water in that upright bag. And after it's purified, to help make it taste a little bit better, we're gonna use some instant coffee. Not only is that gonna help make it taste better, but that caffeine is gonna help the metabolism inside my body to help maintain a little bit more of a better core temp. Right, and there's nothing worse than cold feet. So having a pair of clean, dry socks that if your feet get wet, maybe it is by dipping in and getting some water, that you can get your feet dry and get them taken care of. And while you're inspecting your feet, you need to be looking for hot spots and blisters, and that's why we have some mole skin. All right, we also got a beanie put in here. Being able to maintain that core temp, again, is absolutely critical, especially as the ambient air temperature is dropping on us. And of course, we want to make sure that we don't overheat as well, which is easy to happen even in the winter time. Now, to affect navigation, we're going to use a small button compass. Of course, the only thing that this thing is going to be able to do is help give us some cardinal direction. Right, and using that button compass and knowing a little bit about the area for where I'm operating in is how we got to this location. And of course, along the way, we need to be able to be thinking about communication. And in this case, we're gonna use a couple easy to use signal devices to communicate with those who might be looking for us. First one is great to be using at night. It's just a chem light on a stick. We deploy this thing, we break the chem light, and we can spin it around making the classic buzzsaw. It is extremely effective at night. But the other tool and instrument that we have inside is a signal mirror. Signal mirrors are great, especially when you have some daylight, but in this case, we don't. So we need to wait for some of this uh, sun to get out from overhead, and then we can use this to affect survival. And then we keep our signal mirror inside a sleeve to help protect it so that we don't inadvertently use it to signal somebody that we don't want to. All right, team, if you made it this far, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave some comments, and check down in the description for some links. Now, hygiene can't be overlooked, man. Everybody has to pop a squat every now and then, right? So having some baby wipes on you is a classic staple for every survival kit. Otherwise, you're going to be using something that you don't want to use. Not only that, but it can also be used for other basic hygiene items to help prepare and clean our fingers prior to consuming some food. Maintaining a good calorie intake not only going to help ensure that we have the fuel that we need to keep moving, but again, is also going to help make sure maintaining as good of a core body temperature as we can. And continuing to drink fluids is going to help us digest that food that we consume. We've got a few items for first aid. We have a gauze pad, got a band-aid for some boo-boos, got some BC powder, and we also have some duct tape. Good as new. Right, being able to write and take or dictate notes can be a critical thing, especially if you need to be debriefed on the back end. You can track your progress along the way, things that you encountered, and it's also a great meditational tool. You gotta take care of your mind, fellas.
having a couple basic tools like a knife and a multi-tool whether it's a Gerber or a Leatherman along with some cordage in this case some bank line we can construct some field expedient emergency shelters to help maintain that core temp until either help comes or we can self rescue. And we can also use that same cordage to dummy cord important things to our bodies like that compass. At the odds of catching game in the middle of winter, slim pickings, especially without having any kind of bait. But I did see a small game trail and I'm hopeful that Maybe with a leaned up tree and a small, easy game snare, I might catch me a little squirrel. Right, and by being resourceful, able to find a little bit of pitch. I actually found quite a bit of it. So even though this wood is extremely damp out here, able to affect a small survival fire to help make sure we can maintain that core temp, dry out some clothes, cook up some grub, even use it to affect signal. Right team, we could continue to make some improvements to our foxhole. It's one of our principles while we're out and about. But I think as you can see, we're gonna have a pretty high chance of surviving the low temperatures tonight. We got a nice thick bed we have an overhead cover that's going to reflect some of that heat back down on us. We have some wind protection, and we're not expecting any rain. All right, team, if you like the content of it, make sure you like it. Leave some comments down below. That way we can continue to keep this conversation rolling. I appreciate all you guys, man. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.